I'm Dakota Madrona, and this is how to make a basic pipe. I'm going to use a can like this. I discussed cans in a separate video, and I'm going to make a very basic fume pipe. In other videos, I will describe other pipe making methods for different pipes, and I will focus heavily on gathering up glass and making it nice and thick with other techniques. But for this video, we're really just working on the basic pull of a pipe, the bowl, and everything else. I hope you enjoy, and thank you for watching. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take a can. I've discussed how to make a can in another video. Here's a can. I've got a clear can of 26 millimeter by 4 millimeter tubing. You can take some colored tubing that's similar sized or what I'm going to do is I'm going to fume this tubing. So I'm going to take this clear can and I'm going to use a little bit of silver fume and I'm going to cover this guy up with some silver fume. So I'm going to start off, I'm going to take my can here, my clear can, I'm going to warm that up in the flame. I'm going to warm it up a little bit by doing what we call the typewriter and this will come in later. But what I'm doing is I'm spinning at a nice consistent speed, but I go from one side of the can to the other. When I spin, I cover 360 degrees of the cylinder, and then as I move, that will cover the whole tube with the same heat. As long as my movement is consistent back and forth, or my movement is consistent spinning, then everything will heat up nice and evenly. <clears throat> I don't want to heat up my can to the point where it's moving. I just want to warm it up a little bit. That will help fume stick to the glass. This is my fumer. It's a little piece of clear glass. And it has a little piece of silver on the tip. I'm going to bring that little piece of silver into what we call the fingers or the candles of the flame. We have our flame here and we've got the fingers or candles here. They are uh, the brighter part of your flame and they look a little bit more like a big lighter. We want to bring that silver right into the tips of those fingers, the brighter part of your flame closer to your torch. You will see it start sparking. That's the silver vaporizing. The silver will heat up so hot, it becomes a vapor. And that vapor gets trapped in your flame and propelled forward. That allows your flame to act like spray paint. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the silver into the flame. The flame will act like spray paint. And I'm going to cover my glass with that fuming. Back and forth the same motion I did before. Covering my whole piece. As you can see there, I have a nice fumed piece of glass. So now I'm going to connect up a punty to the other side so that I can hold it with two hands. So I'm going to heat up both my tips here and I'm going to connect a punty to the closed end of my tube. I fuse them together and exit the flame. You want to keep spinning, have it feel like one tube, one piece of glass, just one tube that's never been manipulated. It's much more of a feel. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and forth with my flame over two-thirds of my section of glass here. You can break it down to about a half if you want, but you're aiming to heat up about one half to two-thirds of your section of tubing here. You want to melt that down and what we're going to do is we're going to avoid hitting our blow tube with our flame. We don't want to hit our blow tube with our flame. We're going to avoid 
hitting the flame onto this little bubble area where it tapers off. We're going to avoid hitting right here with the flame, but we're going to heat, heat up two, two thirds to a half of our glass right here. And we're not going to heat up the last half or the last one third of our section towards our punty. Now I'm going to heat up and go back and forth, spinning nice and consistently. It doesn't need to be very fast, but it needs to be consistent. So I keep spinning and then I go all the way up to about two thirds of my piece. And then I come all the way back down. And I can either do the typewriter where I start from one side and slowly go to the other. And I can take it out of the flame, go to the other side, and do it again. Or I can just do the typewriter the other way, go back the other way. So now I start on the left-hand side, I'm spinning, come all the way back up to the right-hand side of the two-thirds section I'm trying to heat. And I come all the way back down to the left-hand side. For this exercise, we're not aiming to gather the glass too much. Eventually you're going to want to gather your glass nice and thick in this step. That just takes time. Right now what we're aiming to do is get a nice even heat base. We want everything to be heated up the same amount. You'll notice my glass is starting to look a little bit more like a peanut and taper down. You do not want to pull apart yet. Keep your hands together. You want it to stay as thick as possible and retain to the shape of your cylinder as best as possible until you're ready. Now this is very hot and ready to be pulled. It's nice and evenly heated and I'll take it out of the flame. Now I'm going to give it a little pull. Very gentle, gentle pull as I spin. The spin will help you stay straight and that pull will give you a little length to your pipe. I avoided heating up my mouthpiece or that tapered part over on this side, as I previously mentioned, and that left it more bubbled. Now that little bubbled area, that left me a mouthpiece. I simultaneously made that while making my neck because I didn't heat that section up, so it didn't pull. Later, you will work on melting that down and then blowing it back up because you're going to want to thicken that glass up and sometimes you're going to use frit and things like powdered glass and draw inside of your piece. So you're going to want to melt that down completely and then work it afterwards. But we didn't have to do that here because this piece is just clear glass and fume. My next step is I'm going to cut off this punty. I'm going to leave the flame. The center of the flame is the hottest part of your flame. So I'm leaving the center of my flame right where the punty attaches so that it disconnects right there. But sometimes you're going to be left with a little nub on the end, a little nipple. Let's rip that nipple off because that nipple can sometimes be filled with bubbles, uh, trash glass, you know, just anything we don't want. So I'm going to rip that off. So I got it hot and I'm rolling the tip of my punty on the tip of my piece where that nipple was and it's wrapping around the end of my glass. And I'll leave it in the flame where I want it to disconnect and it will cut. You can also do this in small amounts, heat up the tip, attach straight on and pull away and come down and disconnect in the flame. Now I'll allow you to grab small amounts of glass. Now I lost a little bit of fuming on the tip of my piece, so I'm going to reapply fuming with my fumer. And there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up. Now my next step is I'm going to heat up all the glass that I didn't heat up before. I'm going to heat up this end bit. 
I'm gonna get that nice and hot and go back and forth. What I'm doing here is I'm heating up back and forth, just like I did the neck. I'm taking this little cylinder section and it's gonna turn a little bit more uh, circular or spherical. So I'm trying to melt this down and make it more spherical. It's gonna look a little bit more like an egg and then it's gonna look a little bit more spherical. Now, as I do this, I'm heating up back and forth. You'll notice I'm angled back ever so slightly my blow tube is angled towards the ground. You can be more perpendicular to the flame and horizontal to the table, but you wanna bring it down so that all that glass gathers towards the back of your pipe. It all gathers towards your neck. And gravity will allow it to push back and gather towards your neck if you angle it back. You do not want to angle forward, letting it drip forward. That will give you much more of a teardrop shape and will not allow it to gather. So you want to pull it back. Have your, you want to stay perpendicular to your flame, but have the blow tube pointed towards your table. Just like this, as you've seen, this guy's much more football shape or egg shape now. And what I can do is I'm going to bring it out of the flame and I keep spinning. I bring it to my mouth and give it a couple puffs. You see, I'm spinning and then I puff and I spin and I puff and I keep that spin going to keep the ball circular. Keep the ball straight. And as you can see, it's looking much more egg shape. It's gaining some size width wise. And now we're gonna get it hot again and expand it even more spherical and get it a little bit bigger. And I'm just heating up the ball. I do not want to heat into my neck at all. So I go down to the bottom of my ball, the left side of my ball, and I come right up to the tip of my ball. The middle of your flame is the hottest part of your flame. So when you go from the left side to the right, make sure that when you are hitting the left side and when you are hitting the right side, the middle of your flame is getting there. Now this is looking very spherical. I'm just going to give it a couple puffs for size. I'm puffing and spinning, puffing and spinning. And there we go, and now I have a pipe. My base, I have a basic pipe shape with some nice coloring from the fume. Again, you could do all of this the same way I just did, but you just buy some colored tubing. And then it could be any color you want. So now what I'm gonna do is I need to push my bowl into this piece. And to push a bowl, a functional bowl, it needs a hole, and then you need to push your bowl over that hole. So the first thing I gotta do is I pop a hole. Now I don't wanna pop a hole at a 90 degree angle. I actually wanna pop a hole at more of an acute angle towards my blow tube. That way, when the user is smoking out of the product, they can see inside of their bowl. So I'm gonna lean my flame I'm going to lean my pipe against my flame and light up about a dime size amount there. You might be able to see that lit up. But I light up about a dime size amount at an acute angle on my piece. And I leave it there and I give it a little puff. The thicker it is, the longer it's going to have to wait in the flame for it to pop. But eventually, 
eventually it's going to get warm in that little area that you're heating and want to expand where you're puffing. And when that expansion happens, air will want to pop out of the piece of glass you're heating. And you will pop a hole. So heat, and then you're gonna give it a little puff and it will pop. And there we go, and we got a little popped hole. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up around that hole. So now what I'm gonna do, the next step is I'm gonna heat up around that hole. You can shoot directly at the hole, but then go right around the hole as if you're drawing around the hole. And then you give it a puff every couple of seconds. You want to puff into it every couple of seconds to retain the hole's size. As you heat around this hole, the hole will want to close. Give it a little puff here and there, keeps the hole open. And now as I'm heating, I'm heating around this hole. I'm heating about a nickel size or a quarter size amount of glass around the hole. Once that gets warm, I then can use my bowl push and push a bowl into this hole. Notice how I'm switching sides here. That's because glass likes to drip around. So if I just heated it on one side the entire time, it would like to drip to that one side and get nice and thick on the right hand side if I'm holding it on the left. So I'm switching sides to make sure that my glass doesn't drip too much. I'm also getting a very direct hit into my flame. I could, more lean the flame over the hole if I'd like to. I don't find that that gets as even of a heat job, but it does the job. You can lean it over the, over the hole. But now that it's hot and the hole's the size that I want it to be, I'll take my bowl push here is just a, a rounded cylinder piece of graphite. It's kind of like your thumb. I'm going to put this guy down onto a piece of graphite, line up my bowl push with my hole, and then push into it. Just like so. And that will give me a little bowl that I can then pack. And if it's not big enough after your first push, you can heat up the rim of your bowl a little bit, just the rim, heat up the rim of your bowl, touch to your hole, and then push again, and it'll go a little deeper. Touching to your bowl first before you give it a push can help cool down the inside of that bowl so that the bowl itself isn't manipulated or stretched. You definitely don't want to manipulate or stretch your hole in there. And there we go. Now I've got a little pipe, but it doesn't have a carb. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to plug up that hole that I made in my bowl with a reamer or any other tool that you have, graphite or otherwise, that you can plug up that hole with. You're going to plug up that hole, and I like to hold it upside down so my hand's not in the flame but I'm gonna plug up that hole and then I'm gonna lean it in the flame and pop a hole just like I did uh, making the bowl in the first place. I'm gonna pop a second hole on the side of the pipe where I'd like my carb to be. Some people call the carb a rush. So where you want the rush or the carb to be, you're gonna heat that up 
a dime size amount, just like the bull pu just like with your bull push, and you're going to give it a little puff. And that'll pop your hole. You do it this way too, as long as you angle yourself right. The guy up. And a little puff. And sometimes you want to polish off your carb with the flame because when you pop those holes, they get really, really thin. The glass around the hole gets really thin. So you sometimes want to heat that up, allow it to thicken up a little bit. You want your carb to be about twice the size of the hole in your bowl. So if it's not big enough, get the hole hot and give it a big tough puff. And blow that guy out open. So now we're gonna flatten the bottom of the pipe so that it doesn't roll around. How I do that is I like to line up with the flame and I drop it down into the flame and let the bottom of the pipe just sit down in the flame. And that'll get it nice and hot. But you can shoot directly into the flame if you'd like to. You can shoot the pipe or shoot the flame directly at the pipe. Or let it sit down in the flame. You can also go around in a circle if you've got a large area to cover. Your last step is you're going to bring the mouthpiece of your pipe down to a piece of graphite and then drop the hot part down onto the graphite second and that will flatten that section of glass and allow it to sit on a table. Mouthpiece first, touch down let it sit just like so now that's nice and flat I recommend doing this on a table with a tabletop piece of graphite I used my graphite paddle just for the video to show you sometimes there'll be little marks from graphite when you use graphite pads so you want to polish those off with the flame one two three just a real quick polishing, about three seconds. I'll polish that guy down and make him look nice and flat. And there's your pipe. You got a fully made pipe ready to be smoked out of. And the next step, the last step is mouth piecing. Take a finishing tool or some claw grabbers as I have here you're going to grab a hold of your pipe with your claw grabbers, spin when they're starting to grab onto it to make sure that that's nice and straight, and then push up with your claw grabbers, lock a hold with your claw grabbers, and then you're going to be holding onto your pipe nice and, nice and sturdy. Now I can let go of my blow tube, I'm able to hold onto my pipe, and I can finish off my pipe. So now the last step, you're going to come down, drop down into the flame, and you're going to cut off your blow tube. So you're going to drop down, having the middle of your flame, the hottest point, right where you want it to cut, and pull away your blow tube. And that will detach in the flame. Now you have a little nipple on the end here, and that nipple, that's okay. This is what I do. There are a couple ways to mouthpiece, but this is what I do. I'm going to heat that little extra piece of thick glass up. I'm going to come up out of the flame and tap to the center of it. And I pull away as I spin, and that will pull everything straight into what I call an elf hat. So now I drop down in the flame, disconnect, disconnecting my stringer I just pulled, and I leave myself with a little elf hat, this little pointy tip. I'm now going to heat up that little pointy tip melt it down, it's going to light up, and I'm going to melt it down just to the size of the hole I want. And then I'll tap again, pull away, and now I'll thin out that little part. And once that's nice and thin, you can either use a little tiny piece of glass and poke at it until it opens up, or you can take the blow tube that you were left with, that you just pulled off of your piece, 
you're going to heat up that blow tube. Oh. Really? So now once you got that thin little elf hat, you're going to heat up the tip of your blow tube. You're going to heat up the tip of your blow tube and get that nice and liquid hot. And then you're going to wrap it around your little elf hat right up until where you want your mouthpiece. And then when that cools down, you're going to give it a little wiggle and it will snap off. And now we'll leave you with a perfect little hole on the tip. And you're going to polish that off with your flame. And you're all done. And that's your pipe. You throw it in the kiln, let the kiln cool down, and you're ready to go.